Hello, and welcome to Episode 3 of the Ropeway Center Report. I'm Billy, and thanks for joining me today. Today's topic is Ropeway 101 Part 1. I split Ropeway 101 up into two separate parts to make things a little bit easier to digest. Today's topic is Ropeway Classification Systems. My goal is to use established industry sources to create uh, definitions for various different types of ropeways and present them in a visual format. There are many different types of ropeways, and it can be quite confusing if you don't know what the differences are. Dr. Yosef Nejez has created an excellent ropeway classification system to narrow down these differences based on a set of criteria questions. These, along with additions from classification guidelines from Dr. Archer Doppelmeyer, combine to form what I like to call the tree of ropeways. The tree of ropeways is a visual guide to different types of ropeways. Let's take a look at those criteria questions first. Type of line covers whether the ropeway pulls a passenger on the ground, pulls carriers on a track, or suspends carriers in the air. There are two modes of operation, reversible and circulating, shown in the diagram from Mr. Archer Doppelmeyer. Reversible ropeways can be compared to a playground seesaw. When one carrier is at the top, the other is at the bottom. This oscillating motion is often called jig back operation. Circulating ropeways are like a playground merry-go-round where the direction of movement does not change during normal operation. The number and type of cables includes monocable, where the lift only has one rope, and bicable and tricable systems, where the lift has one moving rope, called the haul rope, that carriers are attached to, and one or more stationary cables, called track ropes, that are used to suspend the carriers. Lastly, fixed grip versus detachable covers whether the carriers are permanently attached to the haul rope, or if they detach from the haul rope in the terminals to slow for loading and unloading. Now we can define some ropeways. Surface lifts are typically used in winter operations where the ropeway pulls a rider upwards along the snow. These lifts are circulating and monocable. Most common are fixed grip surface lifts, which include platter lifts and J bars for one rider and T bar lifts for two riders, as shown in the image on the left. Rope toes are considered a very simple form of fixed grip surface lift. Detachable surface lifts are less common and use a detachable platter at the bottom terminal that reattaches when a rider loads. These are now also known as pommel lifts and shown in the image on the right. Most modern surface lifts have spring-loaded retractable carriers so that there is a more gradual acceleration for the rider when they first load. Surface lifts are often a very cost-effective solution for ski resorts for uphill transportation. Let's move on to funicular railways. Funicular railways use carriers on a track that are propelled by a moving cable running along shivs within the track. The most common type of funicular railways are reversible systems, where the cars reach the endpoints at opposite times and pass each other at the halfway point. These are monocable systems which are constantly fixed to the haul rope. An interesting recent development in funicular technology has been the circulating funicular, which uses smaller detachable carriers to allow for multiple stops along the route while the haul rope keeps moving. Note that funiculars do not have to follow a linear path, since the haul rope can be deflected to accomplish turns in the line without presenting problems to the carriers. Funiculars are commonly associated with European ski resorts, but have a very diverse range of applications. The example reversible funicular on the left is the Hogwarts Express ride at Universal Studios in Florida. Although it was built to mimic the famous train from the Harry Potter franchise, the system is actually a funicular railway. Funiculars are also being used increasingly in airports and for urban transit, like this circulating monocable system shown in the image on the right in Perugia, Italy. Let's move on to the most common type of ropeways, aerial ropeways. Aerial ropeways have carriers that are suspended from ropes and travel through the air from point to point. Reversible ropeways, also known as aerial trams, use the jig back motion to transport passengers. The carriers on these lifts tend to be larger and are fixed to the haul rope. Monocable reversible ropeways have only one rope for support and movement combined. In bicable and tricable reversible ropeways, one or two fixed track ropes support the carriers. These ropeways have larger carriers, known as cabins, but their capacity is limited since they have to stop to load and unload the carriers. An option for reversible systems include grouping smaller cabins instead of one large cabin such as the monocable reversible system on the left at Waterworld in Colorado. 
Bicable and tricable reversible ropeways can cross very long spans without towers, making them useful in areas with rough terrain or any other areas where there are long sections without space for a tower. The image on the right is the Portland Aerial Tram in Oregon. Circulating monocable ropeways are the most popular type of ropeway in the world. The main distinction is fixed grip versus detachable. Fixed grip lifts, most commonly chair lifts like the ones shown in, on the left, are relatively inexpensive but have a line speed that is restricted to how fast people can load or unload. Detachable mono cable ropeways made it possible for aerial ropeways to achieve higher speeds and high capacities. Carriers detach from the rope in the stations, slow for easier loading and unloading, then speed back up to reattach to the haul rope. This allows the haul rope to move continuously at a faster rate. This technology is ideally suited for cities, such as the gondola shown on the right in Medellin, Colombia, due to high capacity and low cost compared to other urban transport options. Note that the carrier type for circulating monocable ropeways can be gondola cabins, chairs, material transport units, or a combination. The final branch on the tree is circulating bicable and tricable systems. These lifts use track ropes, like an aerial tram, to achieve longer spans while maintaining the benefits of consistently arriving detachable carriers. Bicable systems have been around for a long time, but tricable systems, like the one shown here in Lushan, China, are a newer technology that is revolutionizing the ropeway industry. These lifts can have very large capacities, incredibly long overall lengths, and travel routes never before thought possible for aerial ropeways. And there you have it, the tree of ropeways. It is important to note that the tree is a good place to start, but not an end-all, be-all system. There are a number of things emitted from the tree for clarity, such as carrier type and pulse lifts, and a select number of lifts that don't quite fit evenly into a classification, such as funitels and funifors. The images on the top left are systems that were omitted from the tree of ropeways because they didn't quite fit neatly into the classification system. Funitels are circulating monocable detachable lifts where the cabins are suspended between two parallel haul ropes. This provides exceptional wind stability. Funifors, also known as dual haul rope loop trams, look like a typical reversible tram, but have two separate haul rope loops with separate drives. This allows them to operate independently as opposed to conventional jig back systems. Pulse lifts, like the pulse gondola shown on the far right, are circulating fixed grip lifts, but have groups of closely spaced carriers. The ropeway speeds up while the carriers aren't in the terminals and slows down for loading and unloading. This allows for faster ride times without the costs of detachable lifts. I didn't include carriers as a criteria question on the tree of ropeways because it would have made things a little too complicated visually and there are many, many different types of carriers. Some additional carriers, in addition to the images shown on the tree of ropeways, include cabriolet gondolas, bubble chairs, and material transport carriers for ore. Once again, I want to stress that this ropeway classification system is not of my own doing, but comes from the work of Dr. Josef Nejes and Dr. Arthur Doppelmeyer. The sources I used to put together this webinar are cited on this slide. And here are the sources of all the images I used in today's webinar in case you saw something during the webinar that caught your eye and you want to know more. I hope the tree of ropeways helped you better understand all the different types of ropeways out there. Now it's time to learn about ropeway components and find out how these wonderful machines work. We'll do that in the next episode of the Ropeway Center Report, part two of Ropeway 101. I hope you'll join me for that, and thank you very much for joining me today. Bye.